Welcome back to Feel Free, the only podcast that will tell you to chase your dreams and also call you out on all your bullshit, myself included. If you haven't already, give us a like, subscribe, follow, and share on all your favorite listening and social media platforms. Oh, uh, yeah. So without further ado, let's, oh, uh, yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so we've had a little bit of a, a hiatus on the cast as all of my fans, all 20 of them have been telling me. <laughs> so basically what had happened was my desktop pooped out on me. Okay. It was devastating. Right. And I had thought I was going to just buy a new one. Fuck that. That's a lot of money. So I was all distraught and I was telling my one buddy about it. I'm just like fortunate enough to have like a bunch of like really nerdy people as friends, like tech people, right? <laughs> you know? Tech nerds. Tech nerds for sure. And my one buddy Josh was basically telling me that it's probably my hard drive because Windows just kept crashing, right? So he goes, yeah, it's really not that difficult. And I'm like, dude, that's scary though. Like opening a computer... Have you ever opened a computer before and, and looked inside of it? No. No, exactly. I have no business doing that. You don't. I and am terrible with computers when they're working fine. You are. <laughs> I'll tell you, you are. For sure. So when you pop that thing open, it's basically like another world in there, right? So I went in there with a the screwdriver, just unscrewed the old hard drive, bought a new one, put it in, booted that shit up. Man, I'm just like Johnny IT business over here. Hey, Don, I'm basically starting like a fucking side business, fixing computers. I'm just kidding. I won't do that. But anyway, the computer's working again. It's actually faster than before, and it was a $50 fix. So it's fucking tight. But that's the reason why we haven't been able to do any podcasts. Now, I do have a laptop, but it's a work laptop, and I really didn't want to like do anything like that on it understandable you know Set the boundaries you know what i'm saying um so we're we're here talking this week about coping mechanisms and lo and behold apparently i don't really have any nope per lisa nope i per do me per you i do not have any coping mechanisms now we're going to be talking about coping mechanisms I should have looked up the frickin' definition, but I got my phone here, so I could do that. Mm -hmm. Or you can give a definition of coping mechanism. Can you give one? I feel like it'd be better if you looked it up. Oh, yeah, Because right. that's more accurate from well, a yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. trusted source. Well, we have technology, so I can do that. So coping mechanisms. Strategies that people often use in the face of stress and or trauma to help manage painful or difficult emotions. Mm -hmm. So, as you all know, your boy is a recovering drug addict, right? All of my coping mechanisms were very, very, very unhealthy. Detrimental. Yep. Yeah, they were bad. So, mostly drugs. <laughs> Drugs. They were all drugs. They are all the drugs. And I do put nicotine in there in that list. Um, I actually named five of them. Let's see. So number one, my old coping mechanism was drugs. Right? Drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. Second was nicotine. Okay. Third was a very specific video game called League of Legends. Ugh. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> Four was porn. Mm -hmm. And then five, I put this down there. It wasn't really like, a, a, I, I wouldn't call it a problem. It was mm -hmm. sugar, right? So I did. Yeah, sugar eating. Yeah. I don't really have a problem with like eating or overeating or even like eating too much sugar. I do noticeably remember when I was getting off of nicotine mm -hmm. that I was just eating a lot of candy for those three weeks. Right? Allegedly. Allegedly. You didn't, you didn't know I was doing this, but I was doing you it. You said it, but I never saw it. No, well, this is like the first month we were hanging out too. Yeah. You know? So those were the five that 
used to make up my coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And with all of the work that I've done on myself and, you know, my journey in sobriety, I've gotten rid of pretty much all of them. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have been smoking a couple cigars here and there the last couple weeks. Um, almost as like a celebration for the progress I've made on the book. Mm -hmm. Cause that's a big step for me. Uh, the progress on the podcast and also doing it because damn, it feels good. And hmm. you know, I fucking love that shit. So the main reason why I also picked it up, um, your boy's still grieving over here, but that, but that's, you know, it comes in waves. Um, and after talking with Lisa about coping mechanisms and her flat out telling me that I don't have any. <laughs> um, I was brutal. I was like, you don't have any. I know. Zero. It, but I'm like, well, what What do you mean? Because like, <laughs> I'm like, so then, then that night I'm like, there's no way I don't have any fucking coping mechanisms. I'm like, okay, let's, let's think this through. So I went online and I looked up a couple. So apparently like making to-do lists, writing mm -hmm. down your goals is a coping mechanism, pap talking yourself, mm -hmm. um, any type of physical activity, mm -hmm. right? Stretching or venting to someone. Mm -hmm. And I named off all of these and I'm like, oh shit, I already do all of these on a consistent basis, right? Right. So you stated that because... Yeah, so I stated that they're all coping mechanisms. However, once they become part of your set routine and habits, then it becomes like you are going to need something else when a very stressful event happens. Right. And you those things just aren't cutting it anymore because right. you're doing them all the time. So yes. those cover like the baseline of everyday stresses, anxieties. But when something major happens and they're not cutting it, then sometimes you need another coping mechanism right. to help you get through it. Right. And you don't have that. No, I don't. At the moment. At the moment. <laughs> because the main one is playing basketball. Right. And I haven't been able to do that. Right. Because basketball is like your number one coping mechanism. And it that is. always helps. For sure. Yeah. Always works. Absolutely. But you don't have it. So you I need don't. something I know. in the meantime. And then, so like, so I do go on a lot of walks too. Right. And listening to music is also a coping mechanism, right? Even on some websites they had like watching TV or like reading a book or writing. And I'm like, well, I've already made the writing and the reading part of like my daily or weekly habits, right? Right. So it was basically the basketball that ended. Now, I had been thinking and writing in my phone the last couple of weeks about like the perfect storm, mm -hmm. right? That's just what I got hit with. You know, you go through loss. Also, I'm working two jobs that have been extremely fucking stressful trying to strong arm publishing a book, mm -hmm. rolling my ankle so bad that I can't play basketball is just a lot. And then there's all these just like obligations, you know, once you get to be an adult, it's like, oh, there's weddings and there's events and there's this and there's that. And there's, there's plans. <laughs> there's plans that, you know, there's two. Here's the thing. There's too many plans in the summer. Yep. I fucking hate it. It's officially fall, so there you go. Yeah, so I'm basically gone the next six months. <laughs> yeah, this is it. You MIA. I'm I'm gone. Um, so it was just all all of it hitting me all at once, mm -hmm. and it, it was because I lost the basketball thing that you know I started smoking cigars, right? Yeah. Now I wouldn't say you know I'm not smoking cigarettes or e cigs. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just a no go. So the cigars are a little more manageable. Right. Uh, the tobacco isn't bleached the same way as the cigarettes and stuff. So it's not as bad for you. Granted, like it's still bad for you. Right. You know, um, other coping mechanisms that I used to use a lot were like video games, not League of Legends. A big one was watching anime. And I've been really off my anime grind the last like six months and the video game grind just because I've been working too much and trying to write a fucking book. Right. Know? So now that I'm hopefully getting back on the court next week and I realize that I do still need to find other coping mechanisms so the next storm that hits me doesn't complete, knock you out. Yeah, completely destroy me. Yeah. Um, so trying to find that time to like watch some more anime 
or just play a video game. And I'm like super hard on myself. So I like know <laughs> how I get if I like something a lot, right? Yeah. And that's just like the lack of impulse control from being ADHD. Like if I like something and want it, I get it, right? So I know if I really like anime or mm -hmm. a video game, like that's all that matters to me. Yeah. You know? Or, like, when I'm finishing the book or doing the podcast, like, that's all that matters. Yep, it's the fixation. Yeah, same with the basketball thing. So, this storm happened, and now I'm basically coming to terms with the fact that I have to reinvent myself yet again, mm -hmm. right? After three years of, like, tireless sobriety work and all that other stuff, and you still reach these, like, impassable walls right and it's like well how the fuck am i going to get past this right right you know emotionally we don't teach kids how to deal with their emotions and god knows that most parents don't even know how to deal with their own emotions i'm just fairly certain that like a majority of the human race is like still clueless on emotions and consciousness right yeah like we just know how to work and survive at this point so now that i'm like writing out all of these like coping mechanisms I'm like coming to terms with the fact that I'm doing a really bad job at like using them productively <laughs> you know so it fucking sucks yeah I uh, mean you do not use them productively I don't and I've been trying to help you find <laughs> a way to do that and like set boundaries like healthy boundaries and i feel like that's important for coping mechanisms i'm really bad at that yeah because you don't want them to become a crutch i know I, I i refuse that's the problem yeah but that's that's just how i am because i've gotten sober and stuff it's like immediately when i see something that might become a crutch i'm like nope like, don't I, want just, it. I just stop immediately yeah you know which isn't healthy well i mean i guess if you know that it could lead to an unhealthy habit, then that's a good boundary that you set. Like, I'm not even going to go and attempt that because you know of your... Addictive personality. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a good thing. It that is. That is a positive thing. It's a lot of energy, though. I'm always, constantly on watch of my myself. <laughs> you know, I'm just constantly... You're all... That, I think that just means you're constantly hard on yourself. Yeah. Because you're like, sure. I can't have this because I can't handle it. When at, I feel like at some points you just need to trust yourself a little bit more. Tough. That's big, which, big tough right yeah. there. But, I mean, that is a personal journey that it, everyone needs to go on. However, I do feel like you are super hard on yourself and you need to trust yourself and know that you have made it this far and that you can still make it even farther. So Yeah. Yeah. I know that, but... <laughs> you know, we, I know that, we, but we, I'm still not. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> practicing what you preach is the hardest fucking thing to do in the world. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm saying all this, and there's still some things that I don't trust myself on, and I like do the same shit. So for, for sure, but you like actually like use your coping me mechanisms the correct way, you know. For the most part, yeah. I would like to think so. Yeah. So what do you got as your coping mechanisms? I'm not going to name off yours. You're going to do it. Okay. So the four that I have that aren't like daily habits, um, I do breathing exercises. Okay. Um, this really helps me and it kind of ties into meditation mm -hmm. um, because I, <laughs> when I get frustrated and anxious, it then turns into anger at myself and that then turns into me throwing stuff. So in order to combat that, I have to like take a moment and take deep breaths and count to 10, like breathe in for 10, breathe out for 10 mm -hmm. to literally slow my thinking down. Otherwise I am going to go berserk. Right. And that is not pretty. It's only happened a handful of times, <laughs> but I don't want that to happen. Um, and then I also like a coping mechanism if I am super stressed at the end of the day, taking the proper time to decompress and unwind instead of just going to sleep because I find for me, then it just carries over into the next day. Yeah. If you don't deal with it the night before. So I like to take baths to sort of end off my night. I haven't done that in a while, but I haven't really had the need to. Yeah. Um, and then another thing is like in the moment, this is mainly when I'm at work. 
I scribble. <laughs> yeah, doodle. Yeah, I yeah. doodle. Um, if I'm in a meeting and like I'm stressed or someone pisses me off in a meeting and I can't say anything because I need to be professional. <laughs> then I like doodle and scribble on a piece of paper and I just like have so many pieces of paper that I just have to throw out or sticky notes because mm -hmm. they're just full of doodles and shit. Doodles. Yeah. 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 So those are the four that really helped me that aren't regular in my routine. Wait, that what I was use. the four? I thought it was three. Well, it's breathing exercises, okay. meditation. Okay. So like outside of breathing exercises, like doing meditations, like literally just sitting with myself and trying to clear my thoughts or yeah. have my thoughts come by, acknowledge them, let them go. Yep. Um, that is also really helpful. Um, and I got like a specific meditation that I gained from my previous therapist that really helps with the vision of me being a solid rock or in my case, I visualize a Lotus and a floating, a flowing river in front of me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my thoughts are the river. And sometimes my river is really dirty and mucky because there's so much shit in there. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's clear and that just depends on how my thoughts are. And that helps me because I'm a very much a visual person. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know like, I need to like get back into meditation because mm -hmm. I was really big into it. I was really big into it when I was smoking a lot of weed, you know, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's easier to sit still, like be stuck <laughs> when you're baked. Yeah. Well, I mean, you see how much energy I have too. Yeah. So it's like, it's difficult for me to sit still like that. Mm -hmm. Like I do get in, rhythms where I can like meditate here and there, you know, but I need it more on like a consistent basis. Right. Like even if I can't do daily, like at least a couple times a week, you know, mm -hmm. cause listening to music for me is like that. Mm -hmm. It's mostly the lo-fi that brings me down. Yeah. Which is why I'm, I'm always playing lo-fi. Lo yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, or going for walks. That's nice. And then, you know, taking exercise more seriously Cause I think like we talked about on the walk, it's, I work out and do all of that physical activity just for basketball. Yeah. Like I only lift weights so I can be a better basketball player. <laughs> right. Like that's it. Like, <laughs> see, Joey laughed at that too. So then it's just single minded. So when you're not playing basketball, they're like, well, what's the point? I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Well, I just, uh, yeah, exa well, yeah, that's my mind though, you know? Yeah. It's almost like I'm defeated. Yep. Right? Mm hmm And I take that defeat very personally to myself. <laughs> as Just deflate. I'm instantly, you know. Um, vacations was on here, too. But we've done a good job at that. Yeah, we have been taking a lot of vacations and, like, breaks. Yeah, and little breaks and vacations and going places and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's been nice. Um, on here... Hold on. So I went on clevelandclinic.org because there was a couple like dot com places for the information mm -hmm. on the coping mechanism. So I found a dot org, the Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. And then on there, they're like avoid caffeine slash alcohol. And yeah. then I wrote a question mark after that because <laughs> question? caffeine. Yeah. I don't even. Caffeine, like when you have high emotions and anxiety, caffeine is not good for yeah, that. It amplifies it. Yeah. So. so I actually learned from my mentor when I saw him. So lo and behold, after not seeing my therapist for like four months, right, yeah. because of money things, mm -hmm. I go in there and I just, you know, tell him everything and all that right. stuff. And he kind of reassured me that, you know, the smoking cigars thing wasn't bad because as, as we've said, like I'm very hard on myself. Right. You know, so it's like, oh, I'm fucking up and smoking cigars, like whatever. And he's very into Native American spirituality. Mm -hmm. Like he's at the sweat lodge every week. Like he's really into it. He's got his own mentor mm -hmm. who's a, a Native American medicine man. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me that one of the four sacred plants to the tribe is tobacco, right? Right. They do rituals and that. And he goes, so I'm not, he, he tells me, I'm not really like worried about you doing that. Cause I'm not like smoking cigarettes mm -hmm. cause that's just got like a very fiendish nature to it. Yeah. And you you're know? not like doing 12 packs a day. Yeah. Or like a pack a day was mm -hmm. what I yeah. used to be at, you know? So avoiding the, the caffeine is just out of the fucking question. 
<laughs> it's, it's just, I mean, slowing down is one thing. Um, but he had told me, now I'm segueing back into the tangent that I just lost, the tobacco <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, the nicotine particle, he said, actually takes the place of the uh, the adrenal molecule or something like that. Okay. He said it prohibits like the adrenal, um, not production, but receptors, mm-hmm. right? So it calms you down. Okay. Which is why people who usually have ADD or ADHD yeah. smoke, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. that just makes sense, which is why I gravitated to it at such a young age. Yeah. Well, there's also studies being done that for those who have ADHD, coffee has the reverse effect instead of giving them like, you know how some people like get the shakes and the jitter. Yeah. Right. But it has a reverse effect where it actually calms down that hyperactivity in those with ADHD. But it's a study that's, these studies are ongoing. Yeah. I can definitely see that for the initial like part of drinking the cup. Yeah. And even like even a half hour, an hour after that. Mm -hmm. But later on in the day, I feel that I'm even more jittery. When it wears off. Yeah. When it wears off. Because it's like a drug. Yeah. And the effects wear off. Yeah. I actually feel like I'm even more crazy at the end of the day when I don't (laughs) have caffeine, you know? Yeah. But I can't like just keep drinking coffee all day. I'll fucking blow up, you know? Yeah. Um, a couple other ones. So now, now I guess we're, this is the part where we're, I'm, we're talking about the ones that we should start doing more. Yeah. Right. Cause I'm not going to list off the, the coping mechanisms that I've gotten rid of. Mm-hmm. I did at the beginning. You right. Know, those are bad and dangerous. And if anyone's listening right now and you have drugs, nicotine, I'd also put video games and TV media, right? Yeah. Because, like, on there they said, oh, watching TV is a coping mechanism. I know people who are addicted to TV, right? Yeah. But, and But that is a coping mechanism, mm-hmm. but it's negative, right? Also porn and sugar and food and all that stuff. The ones that I would like to start doing more, definitely meditating. Yeah. Right? For sure. I go on enough walks and I listen to enough music. Mm-hmm. I, I make my to-do list. I, I have activities that bring me joy, mm-hmm. right? It's definitely like the exercise that's got to happen. Yeah. And we, same. we were talking on the walk, like gloving used to be a really big part of my life. Right. Like I used to walk around with the gloves on. Yeah. Because I had so many pairs of gloves. Like I would walk around with the white gloves without the lights in it. It was almost like I was in a like a Disney character. You know how they got the white <laughs> gloves on yeah. and shit? So like there was the two years where I was a rave kid where I would just walk around with the fucking gloves on, right? Gloving's like, I fucking love gloving, right? But it's different when you get to this age or you're out of the scene. It's like the best part about gloving is giving people light shows. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. Right. You know, with poi... You can spin poi. Right. You know, that's more interactive with yourself. And you're not, like, technically giving a light show to people. Mm-hmm. You can just go out there and spin. Now, with gloving, it's different because it's just ten times better when you're giving somebody a light show. Mm-hmm. And when the crew's not going to raves or this isn't a trap house where there's people to give light shows to, mm-hmm. you know. So that, that would be something I'd definitely like to get back into because it also, like, fuels, like, my musicality and that creative energy. Yeah. But it, it it is difficult. So, like, when you come home, you've had a long day. I've had a long day. And even on the weekend, if we're just trying to chill, it's not like I'm, I bring up, like, hey, I want to, like, throw a, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to throw a light show. Like, that doesn't, like, come to my mind, no. you know, as much as it, I feel like it should. Yeah. You know, but I have to, like, act on that. Right. You know, because I know it's going to be good for me. Obviously, basketball is on the list with the working out. That's got to happen. Yeah. I might have to like change up my style of play in basketball. So, really, I'm not so reckless. Yeah, I would appreciate that. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the guys at the gym were telling me because I rolled it again. And the one kid goes, "Are you just gonna like stop driving the lane so much?" And I'm like, "But I have to." They can't stop me. He goes, yeah, but you stop you. And I'm like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. That's hilarious. <laughs> you motherfucker. Yeah, he is not wrong. He's not wrong. But honestly, they can't stop me. So <laughs> I got to figure something out. Yeah. I got to just like maybe like fucking tie like a plank of wood 
to my ankle oh just my God, so it ridiculous. doesn't roll, you know? I don't know. So it stays so completely stiff that it can't roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The things you do to not do what you should do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's innovation. That's genius. Or stupidity it's it's a fine line honestly (laughs) people thought einstein was stupid yeah he's just crazy though so yeah the the gloving um i gotta get back into anime yeah well october is your month for that it is but then i also gotta find some shit to watch like during the months that newer shit isn't coming out yeah and that usually entails rewatching like Mm -hmm. my favorites because you know i got a fucking list of like 50 yeah 50 plus anime that i love you know i've watched a couple times honestly but that's such a like a big part of my life too Mm -hmm. because i'm i'm constantly like watching these characters like overcome ridiculous things you know and they're all it's almost like it's inspiring to me yeah right and we were going to talk about this on the podcast with kath Mm -hmm. when we do the anime one Which she's been super busy, but, you know, having, just having that to to come back to. Mm -hmm. And I I do have to order some, like, Bluetooth headphones or something so I can watch anime in bed while you're sleeping because you pass out at, like, 8.30. I am a grandma, and I go to sleep really early, but also I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work. So crazy. Get up at 5, come home at 5. Fuck that. (laughs) It's crazy. But I don't, and... People would be like, oh, well, you're watching with the subtitles anyway, right? No, but you want the sound. Dude, the you want sound. want the sound effect. And honestly, then you also know what emotion they have behind it if you hear. That's what I'm saying. Even if you can't understand the language, you can hear the inflection. That's literally why me and uh, my group and I all watch it subbed. It's because yeah. the Japanese voice actors are fucking nuts though with so it. So much you know? better. Right? Than the English? Yeah. Yeah, but then you even get some of the animes where like, the music, the original soundtracks yeah. are just gorgeous. Yeah. Like they definitely like hire orchestras for that shit, you know? It is really good. And some of the sound effects and the fight scenes, like you can't be it missing. It just gives that. you chills. Yeah. Yeah. So I gotta get I gotta get some Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, we'll or get you some headphones. All right, that'd be neat. <laughs> um making music was also like a coping mechanism for me. Yeah. Or just writing more poetry or freestyling and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And I like switched gears to be like author john right writer yeah instead of rapper john you know so now i gotta i gotta just like find that balance you're right the pain in the ass because like you go from like i go from like writing very philosophical very logical like Mm -hmm. although my writing is very emotional it's like it's concise like when you're when you're writing raps or poetry or songs and stuff it's like very way more expressive right so like trying to have my brain switch off be, between being logical and being expressive is is tough mm-hmm. but I, I i have to put more energy into that yeah and yeah yeah well, what do you got to do um i think for sure i want to work out more i haven't been able to do that but also i'm just so tired when i come home oh yeah and, the- and i go to bed early but i need to like realize that I'm not always going to get my full eight hours of sleep, you know? Um, and I can still thrive off of seven hours. Like I'll be fine. So making sure that I get that in because that's still good for like my body and soul. So, um, and when I'm like, I've been stressed a lot lately and like that one time I came home and I was like super upset about something that happened at work. And John literally was like, take my keys go work out you need to let this out because you are like heated so i definitely need to incorporate that more not just when i'm mad but like when i'm stressed yeah or just on a consistent basis right gotta let that energy out yeah um i've slowed down on my painting i like got some new stuff for my painting i just have to sort it out i actually have a cart for all my paint stuff that I can roll back and forth. So I have it all nice and concise. Nice. Yeah. Um, So painting for sure. Um, Yeah. I think those are the two main things that I really 
want to incorporate more. The working out and the painting. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll come up with something. I mean, it is the, um, what is it called? Holiday season. Oh, yeah. It's starting (laughs) for me. First day of fall. I love it. I'm got my decorations going up for fall. When you said holiday season, I thought you were like, yeah, Thanksgiving and Christmas are just around the corner. I'm talking about like fall, Halloween, like all of that. And me and Jackie like to decorate and craft. Yeah. That is so calming to me. I like get lost in it. And I could like, we could be doing it for hours and I don't even realize. So that for sure. I love doing that, but I just, we don't have the space to put anything. So I feel like I'm just going to make people <laughs> stuff and give it to them. <laughs> we can figure something out in here. <laughs> sure. Maybe. Well, it's fucking small it in will, here. It can go in the storage unit until yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we get more space. Yeah, of course. But yeah, I love doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, finding more like hands-on things to do. For sure. Yeah, I'm thinking of buying, like, another Lego set for me to, like, put together. Yeah, we need to put that one together. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely I'm more of um, fine motor fixated. So, like, I need to be doing stuff with my hands. Otherwise, yeah, I'm always, like, fidgeting with them. For sure. So, that's where my, like, scribbling comes in handy as a coping mechanism. I feel that. hmm Yeah. See, when I was, like, making when I was making music, like there'd be times where I'd get lost. Like I'm working on the same damn project for like eight hours and I'm just like clicking around, you know, (laughs) but like I'm doing something, you know, Mm -hmm. definitely want to get more into, I mean, I have been like, I've slowed down, but I I totally left this one off the list and this is not really a coping mechanism, but it's like a hobby. Yeah. So the guitar, right. That helps too. Yeah. It just sucks when, I need somebody to teach me. Yeah. You know, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's expensive, right? Yeah. Life's expensive. And I've had to, like, cut a lot of expenses just to, like, publish a fucking book, you know? Yeah. So. Make some sacrifices. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm still doing, like, some of my daily or weekly, like, little finger picking and Mm -hmm. some other shit like that, you know? But I definitely like to find somebody who's more versed in, like, the type of music I actually want to play. Yeah. You know? Because... Like, I'm not just, like, a typical rock guy. Yeah. It's got to be metalcore. It's got to be it's metal. Gotta, I just need to be chugging, <laughs> like, heavy bass chugs. Like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I need that. <laughs> and I can't do it. Yeah. Got to get that. I just remembered another one that I have. Cooking. Cooking, yeah. That, like, sometimes, not all the time, but it's very relaxing to me. And so I can get lost in that, and that is very... Um, relaxing if it's like a new recipe but if it's one that I know and it's just like offhanded I don't yeah. like it I like learning something new like a new, a new recipe to do specifically a new recipe is like one of those strategies I like to use because it's like a formula that you got to figure out right but it's also an art so like they say baking is a science cooking is an art because baking you have to be precise otherwise you could have some salty ass bread yeah you fuck but that like up. with cooking you know you can throw in whatever and so i like that okay yeah yeah i don't bake no, my sister bakes molly yeah. bakes she bakes some fire ass desserts she went to a baking class and she baked so much she came out a whole new chef oh my gosh i can't wait I miss those cinnamon rolls though. i know she she needs to make some more yeah she's gotta hook us up <laughs> for eat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah, coping with reality <laughs> fucking sucks. It does. But I feel like my suggestion to anyone who's looking for a coping mechanism is it's unique to yourself. Like there obviously are general ones like working out and stuff. You know, a lot of people can relate to that. But mm-hmm. finding what brings you joy and you can make that into a strategy that eases your anxieties and stress. Yeah. Something to keep your mind mentally active almost, mm-hmm. you yeah. know. Yeah, and it could does not have to be traditional whatsoever. No. Just scared me. 
What? Because it all shut off? <laughs> I thought it like broke down. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think God. it's on like a the screen shuts off after oh, a half hour. My gosh. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, actually, just like making so making lists is on there. Mm-hmm. Making to do lists or writing your goals down. That's like a coping mechanism. Yeah. Which I do nonstop. You do non. You do make them nonstop. Like the list. Like sometimes I'm making the same list the same week, you know, but differently. You okay? I would just like to point out. So okay. All right. Point it out. Jonathan likes to, like, he has a lot of shows and stuff that he needs to watch and we need to watch together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even think if he realizes it. In this room we are in, he has two lists. Of the same shows we need to watch. Wait, he has really? a master list up there, and then you have a list. No, 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 no. Isn't you're, that no, you're shows? Right. No, that's not shows. That's the show list over okay, there. Okay, then yeah. what is that? That is my master writing list. Okay. <laughs> that's literally like 50 topics okay. up there to write I th- about. I could have sworn you had like on a bigger piece of paper a list of shows. I could have. I might have. I might have. <laughs> But I might have <laughs> written it on a smaller <laughs> list. Oh my gosh. This man is nonstop list. making lists. I thought I liked lists. No, 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 no. I have Every to, day he makes a list. I have to. And multiple. Nonstop. Making lists at work. Making lists before I go the home. The lists don't even have titles. They're just lists. Lists. They're just like tasks that need to be done. Or sometimes a list of people's names. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just gotta follow up with them, you know. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what you want from me. I just, I think it's, it's healthy. It is healthy. The shit gets done, and if I'm constantly, it has to get done because he doesn't remember anything. No, except I don't. the only thing he does seem to remember is the days that his anime shows come on. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that is it. Oh, that's <laughs> important things to remember though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Fuck. You know, I remember, you know, which days I can play basketball. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I'm just a little scattered brained all a the time. Bit. So I think making lists is really important yeah. for people. Even if you don't make lists like I'm, I make, mm-hmm. maybe making a list of like your favorite hobbies. Yeah. And then trying to find, like you said, like a couple that gravitate towards you Mm -hmm. and trying to work that in. Not even, and I I say this, as I say this, it's like, you got to practice what you preach. It's like, okay, I've kind of been out of the working out drive. Mm -hmm. You know, most people who are way more out of shape than me, you can't just like go into it five, six days a week. Right. Right. You can't do that. I can. Mm-hmm. Right. But I've only taken like three weeks off at mm-hmm. this point. So if you don't want to just jump right into a new hobby or healthy coping mechanism, mm-hmm. just try it like a, once a week. Right. Yeah. Set, set aside that time. Now for me, as I say this, like for meditating, it's definitely got to be that like I have to set aside like one time a week. Yeah. You know, 10 to 15 minutes, get get that down Mm -hmm. and then move up to like two times a week right yeah because it's a difficult thing to fucking do yeah or i mean even just like putting it on a post-it like so having a list and then having it somewhere you can see so when you do have that Mm. overflow of emotions or Mm. a breakdown more or less (laughs) shut up (laughs) you have it and you see it and so you know okay this works for me i can do this right now to calm myself down yeah it's also like finding the perfect time to do it Mm-hmm. You know, because everybody has their mornings mm-hmm. and everybody has that time right after work mm-hmm. and everyone has that time right before bed. Yeah. And I'm I'm aware of those three times and what I can do best in mm-hmm. those three times. Mm-hmm. Like in the morning, I can't I, I don't write. Mm-mm. I'm I You're can't. not a morning person. I'm not. But I still get up. Relative, I get up at like seven. Yeah. But. That doesn't mean you're a morning person. No, it's though. not. I get up because I know it's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the last like couple of weeks since I've been dealing with my lack of coping mechanisms, I've been sleeping like a fucking brick. Yeah. Yeah. 
like sometimes nine hours a day. And I never do that. No, you were like eight or less. Eight for sure. I am the one who's like eight or more. Yeah, you for sure, for sure. <laughs> but I've just been so gassed that I just keep sleeping. Also on that list of like things to do is um, with the exercise, vacations, um, avoiding the caffeine. This is the list from the .org place of mm-hmm. activities you can do to spur coping mechanisms. Um, a well-balanced diet and then correct amount of sleep is on there yeah because i'll tell you like now that i like get more than eight hours a day i'm like i love sleep i literally lay here all day i don't give a fuck and i know it's bad you know (laughs) yeah it is bad it like catches you in that trap yeah well it's three weeks of me sleeping through all my alarms now oh my gosh really yeah for sure I mean, I told you there was that one day last week where I did not set an alarm. And that's why you need a safety alarm. I don't trust that. What do you mean you don't trust it? You haven't even tried it, so how would you know? I don't need it. Sure. You sleep through your alarms even though the coffee goes off at 7. I did that like once. Hmm. No, now that you've been doing the coffee thing, though, I wake up for that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that's crazy. No, it's when we weren't doing the coffee thing and I didn't set alarms and I was just sleeping like yeah. a motherfucker. Oh my gosh. But you also have your phone in here. I do in a that. separate room. I do that. Yeah. Can I do you th- still hear the alarm? Yeah, I trick myself. I keep it all the way over here to get my ass out of bed because if I and keep- And you have the volume all the way up? Yeah, because if I keep it next to my bed, it's <laughs> over. That's how I feel. Like I definitely lately have been pressing snooze a lot more. But then I am like, shit, I got to get my my train. I can't miss my yeah. train. But then once I like press snooze two or three times, I don't want to get up. Like I'm groggy. Yeah. When I know when my alarm goes off, I'm like fine. But I'm just like, my bed's so cozy. <laughs> I don't want to get up. But I know if I left it in another room, I'm not going to hear it. Really? No way. Wow. Nope. And you probably would be the one to wake up oh, and for sure. you would be pissed. Yeah. Yeah. So I cannot do that. See, I can't keep it next to the bed because most people hit snooze. Mm-hmm. I'm a step ahead. You I just turn, turn it off. I turn it off completely. Ridiculous. <laughs> Sometimes I'll set like six alarms and turn all of them off as they go off. You are <laughs> reckless. I am reckless. <laughs> <laughs> Say that with such pride. Yeah, well, you know, I literally live down the street from the office. There's no way I'm late at 9 a.m. No. Like, I'll fucking Lucky roll out. Yeah, I'll roll out of here at 8.50. Fine. No. I literally missed my train this morning. Oh, my. It was two minutes early. Oh, And my. I was walking, and it just goes, and I'm like, fuck. Ooh. And you had that meeting, right? You got pushed back to 8, so oh, it was fine. that's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but I was also really pissed, and so I had to take breathing exercises. Otherwise, I wanted to, like, yell at the train. Because <laughs> it was two minutes early, and I can't cross the tracks. Nah. Yeah, it just snapped. She flipped me off. That's fine. I did. So what else That do is we... a major coping mechanism for me, flicking people off. Flicking people off? Well, you... And it gives me... How many people do you train. actually do that to? Like, how I, many how many people do you actually flip off other than me? Oh, um, I flip off my family. Okay. All the time. Okay. But that's just something that we do. Okay. Um, and if I drive, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. Um, sometimes I really like some of the students. They're just I really want to, but I don't. I don't because I am. Because you're professional. Professional. You can't flip off kids. No, absolutely not. No. You should. No. I should. No. That's when I have to utilize my other healthy coping mechanisms when they really annoy me. Like take a step away and ignore. And ignore. That's a good thing. So if you're dealing with reality that you don't want to deal with, ignore it. No, no, no. Oh, this is that's only. What I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is only when it comes to. I am not a parent, but I have worked with children for such a long time. When it, they can be little shits. Yes. They can be little shits, 
And when it gets to a point where you are like either yelling a lot or you're very frustrated, sometimes it is the most healthy thing to literally take a moment and walk away. Because at the end of the day, you are the adult and they are the child and you cannot go berserk on them. No, you can't. No. No. So that's what I have to do. Or like remove myself from the situation and then reevaluate, which is another coping mechanism. Yes, it is. Taking a moment. And I do have that when I get upset. I cannot talk about it right away. No, you can't. I Which is alarming to me because (laughs) I need to know what is wrong. And I, my thing is because if I talk about it right away, I go crazy. I yell. um, Yep. I'm incoherent and I probably will be mean. So I have to step away and take a moment to collect my thoughts and calm down. Take some breathing exercises. Meditate maybe a little bit. Write down what's going on. And then... I can approach the person, the person again. Otherwise, it's not good. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really know how I deal with things in the moment, but I deal pretty level-headed. And then when I when I'm alone, that's when that's when my mind becomes too much. <laughs> so like in the moment, yeah, like these situations that you just talked about. Like mm-hmm. if I have things that happen to me like that at work, at both of my jobs. Mm-hmm. I'm fairly good in the moment, yeah. Right of dealing with stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's whenever I come home and I'm by myself that my mind explodes. Yeah, with the culmination of everything that happened that day mm-hmm. and everything I thought that day. Yeah, and that's when I need to start using the coping. Your coping me- yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I, I don't really like I said I don't have a problem in the moment. Yeah, you know. It's getting to calm myself down at night, which I had said, like, I want to start meditating in the morning, but I'm like, you should probably do it at night. That's what I'm saying, you know, and that would definitely have to be after work. Mm-hmm. So I just got to figure out a way to, to get myself into that yeah. routine. I'm burping over here like, a, mother- yeah, like a motherfucker. Is there anything else we can give the fans? <laughs> What they need. Um, no, I would just say find what works for you. It's probably going to take trial and error, but. Don't put it on the back burner. No. no. Try now. Yes. Try it, it now. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. And, and the, the next, next day. day. And, and the, the next, next day. day. <laughs> yes. But definitely try now. Find something that suits you. Utilize your strengths. I think making a list of your yeah, okay, here we go. Making a list of, <laughs> honestly, making a list of the coping mechanisms you have that you don't like or that right. you know you the do. The unhealthy ones. The unhealthy ones. And then make a list of the ones that you do right now that are healthy because everyone's got some. Mm-hmm. And then make a list of the ones that you need to start doing. Yeah, that you want to. And also be realistic. Yeah, for sure. For what's best for you. Because, like, getting if you are not a morning person and you don't have to be at work at, until nine, getting up at five a.m. and meditating for an hour is that really realistic? No, it's not. No. no, no. So, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. So be realistic with your goals and expectations. Obviously, mm-hmm. definitely like seek some help too. I mean, there's so there's so much information on the internet. You can find from valid sources. From valid sources, mm-hmm. you can also just like talk to people who have healthy coping mechanisms mm-hmm. too, and you can try and figure out what works best for you yeah so we uh we good yeah all right appreciate everybody coming out for the next installment of feel free hopefully my fucking computer doesn't die again (laughs) it's probably not gonna we'll we'll be back at it again in a couple days so hope you all have a good rest of your night and a good weekend bye